All right, so here we're going to use a concrete example to try and highlight the main insights from the Coase theorem. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a situation where a railway runs next to a bunch of farmland with a bunch of crops, and there's a four different settings that we're going to look at here, where we give different property rights and different transaction costs. The first one we're going to look at is going to be this one over here, where the railway has rights and there are no transaction costs. The railway has a right. Our setup is that if the railway exists, it gets $5,000 of value from its operation. The crops, if there is a fire from sparks from the railway running by it, lose $2,000 in their crops. Right? They also have another alternative of avoiding the fire, and that alternative is to put up a fence, which costs $1,000. So what happens? Well, with the railway having the right to making these sparks, the crop owners are going to look at, do I lose $2,000 from a fire or $1,000 from building a fence? I'm going to build a fence. The distributional consequence of this is that the railway owners gain $5,000 from operating. And the crop owners, if we look at this, are going to choose to lose $1,000. So they will lose $1,000 from building the fence. Okay, so from this, we can go ahead and say, what is the net value of social resources? Well, we can look at the $5,000 minus the $1,000, and we can say that we have a net value of social resources of $4,000. So now looking at this situation over here, situation two, where the crops owners have the rights to not having the fires take place from the sparks from the train. And again, we have no transaction costs. So similar to the first situation where we had no transaction costs, again, we're going to have no transaction costs. The other setup is exactly the same. The railway gets $5,000 in value from operating. The crops, if they catch fire, lose $2,000, or it's $1,000 to build a fence. The railway owner now here has to find a way to transact with the crop owner and pay somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000 to have them build a fence, right? So are they going to let the fire take place? and just lose two thousand dollars or they're going to lose one thousand uh, dollars by building a fence they will pay somewhere between these two amounts let's say they pay fifteen hundred dollars to the crop owners to build that fence the railway then loses one point five thousand dollars that's really just a transfer of one point five thousand dollars to the crop owners however but then still we have to remember that the crop owners have to build the fence still so the crop owners don't just get to keep that money a thousand of it has to go towards building a fence. But they are going to, in this situation, build a fence. The rail owner pays the crop owner to build a fence. The net value of social resources then is 5,000 minus 1.5 plus 1.5 minus 1,000, which is $4,000. On to the next situation, situation where the crop owners again have the rights, but we have high transaction costs. Transaction costs of $4,000 in this situation. Our setup, once again, is exactly the same, okay? The operation of the rail is valued at $5,000. The crops, if they are lost to fire, it costs $2,000 in lost crops, or we can build a fence for $1,000. Now here, we have to think about this kind of trade-off for the crop owner. Is the crop owner going to build its own fence in this situation? Well, you could think, hey, building a fence is cheaper, but you have to realize that if there is a fire, the since they have the property right, in this situation, the rail owner would compensate the $2,000 loss. And so really there's no loss to the crop owner at all if there is a fire, but there is a loss of $1,000 if there is a fire. Well, from the crop owner's perspective, then they can choose to build a fence at a cost of a thousand or have no loss whatsoever and allow the rail owner to then face the cost. So they're not going to build a fence themselves. And so we end up without a fence in this situation, even though the rail owner would prefer to pay for this thousand dollar fence as opposed to paying two thousand dollars to compensate for the fire. Right? The reason they can't pay for this fence is because there are these high transaction costs of $4,000 to make the fence come about in all areas. And so the rail owners have to go through and look at their different 
trade-offs. And what they're going to do is what they're going to figure out is that they're not going to face a trans these transaction costs because there's not going to be a transaction. The cost of offense plus the uh, is a thousand dollars. The cost of offense is a thousand dollars plus the four thousand dollars from transaction costs. Right. So the cost of doing the transaction is really five thousand dollars in total. Instead, what they're going to do is just pay $2,000 and compensate the lost crops uh, that appear, right? Compensate those $2,000 in lost damages. So what we end up with is instead of building a fence, we just have the rail owners go through and, you know, basically have sparks and set fire to the crops that exist uh, in the surrounding areas. And so it's because of these high transaction costs that we actually get a different outcome than the optimal outcome of building the fence, right? And so we're gonna get this alternative outcome in this situation where the rail owner does not, is not able to transact with the crop owner to build the fence because these transaction costs are so high, right? And so now if we think about this, we can look at, okay, what are the distributional consequences here? The rail owner is going to get $5,000 from operating, but the rail owner is going to have to compensate the crop owner $2,000 for the damaged crops. And the crop owner, yes, gets that $2,000, right? But they also lose $2,000 worth of crops, okay? And so we have this weird distributional consequence here, and we end up with a situation where for the first time, there is no fence. So our net value of social resources can look at kind of our distributional consequences, and we end up with plus five, minus two, plus two, minus two, right, which ends up being $3,000. Okay, to the last example where we have the railway has the rights and we have high transaction costs. Again, the exact same setup of what we've been doing, $4,000 in transaction costs, just like our third example, where we had high transaction costs. The railway values operating at $5,000. The crops, if set fire, it costs $2,000 or it's a loss of value of $2,000. Or we can say, build a fence and the fence costs $1,000 to build in this situation, right? Now the rail owner or the crops without the rights could say, hey, we could transact with the rail owner at a cost of $4,000 to try and get them not to create the sparks. Well, they're not gonna do $4,000 worth of cost. And they're not gonna do $2,000 worth of cost when they could just avoid the cost at $1,000 and build a fence themselves, right? So what outcome do we get when the railway has the right? Well, in this case, the crop owners say, hey, I'll just face this $1,000 cost and build a fence. So the outcome here in terms of distributional consequences is the rail owner gains 5,000 and the crop owner loses 1,000. The net value of social resources from this situation is $4,000, right? Now, if we look at this, this is $4,000 versus $3,000 when we had different property rights assigned, right? Whereas in the top two situations, we did not have any efficiency implications. Here, clearly we have different levels of efficiency. Now, if we look at the top two cases again, where we have no transaction costs in the situation, we can look at the distributional elements in these two settings where we have no transaction costs. And here, what do we see? We see uh, in the first case, the rail owner has a gain of 5,000 and loses 1,000 versus a situation where the rail owner has a gain of 3.5 and loses 0.5,000. So we can definitely see there's equity concerns, right? The rail owner gets different payoffs, so does the crop owners. So there are definitely equity concerns between these two, but there's no efficiency concern between these two. And either way, the value of social resources is $4,000. So we have equity concerns according, according to Coase when there is uh, different property rights, but no transaction costs, but we do not have efficiency concerns. Now, if we move to the two where there are high transaction costs, we can look at the situation where the crops have the rights and look at the distributional consequence. Here, 
the rail owner gets positive three and the crop owner gets nothing. Whereas in the other situation where the railway has the owner, our equity concerns are the rail owner gets 5,000 and the crop owner only loses 1,000. Clearly, again, we have equity concerns. But now let's look at the high transaction costs and realize the real insight here from what Coase was trying to show is that we get efficiency concerns. We only have $3,000 of social resources when we have high transaction costs and we define the property rights to the crop owners, but we get $4,000 of social resources when we have high transaction costs and we assign the property rights to the railway, railway right? Only in the situation where we gave the crop owners the rights do we get no fence, right? What we're looking to do is be, find the least cost avoidance of the situation when we have these high transaction costs. And the least cost avoidance is to have a fence. That's the easiest way to avoid this externality problem. And when we assign the property rights to the crop owners, there is no fence. And so we do not get that least cost avoidance, right? And so what we get here is with the Coase theorem, with no transaction costs, there are yes, equity concerns, but there are no efficiency concerns, right? But what he's saying is in the real world, we are going to have transaction costs. And so we will have both equity concerns and efficiency concerns. So we need to look to least cost avoidance.